friends, Miss Quast here sharing with you some more art and today we're going to be making a painted lady butterfly. So my class has been learning about a butterfly's life cycle and we've been caring for painted lady caterpillars. Most of them have formed chrysalis and we've even had some painted ladies emerge. Now the coloring for painted ladies are orange, black and white. It's similar to the colors of a monarch, but they do look different. Um, so this is a really quick and easy project that you can do at home. Um, I have supplies that I've got you can get from the dollar store. So I have liquid paint, I have colored paper, and I have a pipe cleaner. I also need to use a hot glue gun, but you need to make sure that you're doing that with an adult because I've already burned myself and I'm an adult. If you don't have a hot glue gun, you can always use drippy glue. It will just take a little bit longer. You also are going to need a pair of scissors for the second part. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, boys and girls, if you don't want to make a painted lady and you want to make a bright, beautiful, bold butterfly, go for it. Use different colors. The same kind of technique is going to work. So I have a big piece of orange, which is the main color of my painted lady. And this is just orange construction paper. I'm going to put it landscape, which is long and skinny. And I'm going to fold it over kissing corners. And this is much easier to fold than that pesky cardstock was. And I'm going to gently crease that with my thumb. I'm going to open my paper back up so it's like a book. And the fold is in the center. Now. This is so quick and so easy. And I've done this with my classes for a couple years and every butterfly is different, which makes it so cool. I am only going to put paint on one side of my paper. So I'm going to start with the white and I like to shake the paint a little bit before I start just so it's really mixed. And I'm coming, you won't even be able to see where I'm pouring from because I want to pour from a height. And I'm gonna put some white and a couple little drops gently gently squeeze you can always add more but if you add too much sometimes it really gushes out the side when you do fold it over okay i'm happy that's a lot of white for me i'm going to come in with a little bit of black and so again from a height i notice that this black is a little bit thicker so it's probably going to come out more blobby and that's okay and put it over like so and i'm happy with that because they're kind of bigger blobs so this is where the magic happens. Very carefully, I'm going to take this side with no paint on it and I'm going to close my book. With a gentle flat hand, I want you to start pressing. See how I'm holding that fold with my left hand? I use my right hand, but you could use either. And I'm just going to start gently pressing that paint. And so I'm gently rubbing my paper and I want that paint to kind of move around. And if you use too much, you'll notice it gushes out the side, but don't worry, this is washable. Make sure you just put some paper down or work in a place that's easy to wipe up. Okay, are you guys ready for the grand reveal? I'm going to open up my book. Ooh, ah. So you can see that I have the most beautiful symmetrical, which means what happens on one side happens on the other butterfly here. Now, I made a different one yesterday just because I wanted to show you one that was dry. And you're going to see that even though I use the same materials, it looks quite different. So today's, and I'll move this out of the way for now. And here's my copy that I made yesterday. So same color, same technique, but you can see they're very different. I like this one, how I had some little droplets. Okay, so while well, I can see this is a butterfly, we're going to even kick it up a notch. Now, when we were doing our painting, we had it closed like that so we couldn't see. What I want you to do is take your paper and flip it over so the orange is on the back. And I want you to fold it so that you can see one wing. Now we're going to cut so that our butterfly is going to stay symmetrical. The tricky thing about this is I just have to work slowly and I'm going to make sure I keep pinching it. Now this part here is going to be where the wings connect to my body. So I don't want to cut that otherwise my paper will fall, fall apart. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom of where the wings attach to the body. And what I want to do is I want to leave a little orange edge 
And I am going to, while pinching with my left hand, I'm gently moving my scissors and rotating my paper. And I'm going to follow those shapes that we created when we pressed our papers together. And I like those little dots there. I know they're pretty light for you to see, but I like those. So I'm keeping and making sure that I'm cutting both pieces of paper. And I'll come up here. And these are definitely very abstract looking butterflies. Abstract means they kind of look like a butterfly, but not exactly. Helps if I move this into the camera. And I'm going to keep working coming up the side. So that would be his hind wing. And this is going to be his fore wing. And I'm working until I get back to that folded edge. But remember, don't cut this part where the body is. We need to save that fold. The more snipping you do, the more intricate, which means detailed, that the wings are going to be, okay? So you should have one scrap, and when you open it up, you save that. I mean, I'm sure that could be something funky for another project. I'm gonna toss it on the floor for now. And when I open my butterfly, Ooh, ah, that's mo looking more like a butterfly, isn't it? Okay, so see how I did not cut that? If you do, no worries, get a little piece of clear tape if you made a cut along there and just tape it back together. Okay, so I'm gonna get my pipe cleaner. I happen to have green, you could use whatever you have handy. Um, if you have black, great, white, great, light brown works really well. I want to take the ends of my pipe cleaner kiss them together and pinch it so that you're going to have a V. I want you to hold it and twist it once, twice, three times at the bottom so that there's a twist, like you're wrapping up the bread. Take a pencil or your finger and gently curl your antenna. And then I can just press it like that. Um, traditionally, butterflies have a small club on the end of their antenna, so if you wanted to, you could press it like that, or if you like it open like that, artist choice. Again, this just adds a little bit of interest to it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is, before I glue, I like to just lay the body so I can see where it's going to look best. So I'm happy with that, and now I'm going to get my glue gun, and I'm not going to glue my skin. It is very hot, so this is why an adult should help. I'm going to put a gentle squeeze of glue in the center, and then a little trick that I use is I take my body, and I place it on the glue, and then I use a tool like a pencil or a fork or something that will not burn, and I'm going to hold it on there, and I'm going to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's going to give it enough time for the hot glue to have dried. And there you have it, boys and girls, a beautiful painted lady. Remember, you can do this with white paper and use any color that you want. You can be creative as the colors of paint that you have at your house, or you might have to ask your mom if she or dad could make a special trip and get a few liquid paints. Thanks for being with us today, and I'd love to see some pictures of your butterflies.